Okay. Right, hello everyone again. Sorry, I introduced myself a little bit prematurely. Um, so in the UK, we have something that's called Better Births, which came out a couple of years ago, which um, I think you probably will all have heard of. And it had seven arms to it. And one of the arms was continuity of carer, which is something that isn't really achieved in a big way across the UK, which is a shame. But things are changing. There's been a lot of talk. I feel as though there's change in the air. And um, as a student midwife, I can see in my own trust that they're shifting towards a more um, woman centred and um, individualised care pathway, which is hopefully going to include continuity of carer. So um, I can see that Vicky, you're a lead maternity carer and you're a caseload midwife. That's really interesting. Where are you, Vicky? Whereabouts? OK, so you're in New Zealand, too. So New Zealand, I suppose, for a lot of us, we look at New Zealand as the um, gold standard for giving women great continuity of care and that you have a lot of um, response you take a lot of responsibility for women's care yes can you do you have a microphone on vicky if you go up to the red um telephone thingy at the top of the uh, screen and go through the process you could get the um you could get access to the speak yeah Vicky's going to do it I think um, and that, that should apply to all of you and then you can have a proper discussion it's very slow if you write it down in the chat room so have a go just click on the red uh, telephone thing at the top there and choose uh, instead of the headphones the mic and then you'll be able to talk Is that working Vicky Can you hear me now? Oh, hello. Yes. Hi, Vicky. How are you? All the way across the other side of the ocean. It's magic, isn't it? This is amazing. Congratulations on your new job. Thank you. I'm very excited. Yeah, fabulous. Oh, you'll love it. Working okay. with women is absolutely brilliant. And I'll tell you, if you can get a caseload job working with that continuity of care model, it's just fantastic. Yes, well, I yes. mean, that is my, that's my plan, um, although the trust doesn't have a place at the moment, but the government has said that they want at least 20% of women to have continuity of carer by next year, so they are going to have to start doing something about how we deliver care to women, and I'm hoping it's going to go in a sort of continuity of carer model way. I mean, there's lots of, there are lots of pockets in the UK of um, brilliant models that provide women with exactly you know caseloading care and it works but um it's i don't know why it's not rolled out across the, the uk so how does it work in new zealand um you, well usually they go to their gp find out they're pregnant get a list of midwives some of them they know some of them they don't i've been in new zealand for 20 years i'm australian and it's definitely a better system than australia um and uh, it's usually word of mouth. So they just ring you up and then you start right from minute one and you look after them all the way through. You do all their antenatal care, organise all the um, blood tests, um, the whole lot. You do um, um, your care planning where you plan how you um, they want to birth. Like usually we do home births, water births, um, in the hospital, out of the hospital, in intensive care if they need to. So we can do high risk patients as well. Um, mm. And yeah, we do six weeks postnatal in their houses. Um, six weeks? We Gosh. Very good. And do they have scans? How many scans do they have as standard in their pregnancy? Uh, it used to be two, but now because of the GROW programs, um, it can be five. Right, okay. Which is not a good thing. <laughs> no, more intervention, isn't it? <clears throat> um, 
And so if a woman needs obstetric care, does she see the obstetrician and also can you see the midwife? Yes, they can. Um, they do parallel care. And so I can send for a consult, just a one off consult, or they can actually be um, taken over by the obstetrician. They have clinical responsibility of the obstetrician. And then we do our primary midwifery, which is the breastfeeding and the other measuring the fundus and all of those visits. And um, if they completely get taken over, we still have that opportunity to be midwives supporting the secondary women that are taken over by the obstetrician. And do you work in teams to provide the care or do you just work alone? Um, we work alone but we have uh, there's about four midwives in this I only work in a very small hospital um, and we have the backup of another midwife um, so there's sort of four of us working loosely together if you have days off or but we're all workaholics oh um, yeah so you're always on call for your women yes <laughs> yeah i think because yeah. i think when you say case loading to midwives some midwives in the uk they they think well that's going to be my entire life taken over and they worry about burnout and how they're going to cope but there are models in England where you're only you're on call for 12 hours rather than 24 hours and you're in charge of your own off duty so you're more in control of the hours you work. Uh, if you have a good partner in a str in New Zealand um, that can work very well where like I'm you know I go to Australia I'm going to Rarotonga this year and went to the midwives conference in um, last year in Canada and so you can get time off you just got to make sure you um, look after yourself from that point of view and have a good partner yeah um, I'm just reading Laura's comment I recently learned that if you're working with midwives who share the same values yourself you can make it work yeah that's so true so Laura have yeah. you, can, you, can you use your microphone can you talk to us Laura because you're a student in New Zealand aren't you That'd be really hi, interesting. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Um, you. So, you're are you a first year? Did you say or third? Year? I am. Yes. You're yeah. first year. So, yeah. what's how does your um, training work? So, your midwives, New Zealand midwives, work in a quite a different way to in the UK. So, us midwives, student midwives in the UK, we're based in hospitals, and we get my particular course meant I case loaded two women, and that for me was like a. Um, like an epiphany I thought well this is how I want to work and I provided all the care for the women from start to finish and it was like a no-brainer that it was the best thing for the woman it was the best thing for me but it doesn't work like that for everyone here um so do you do lots of case loading in your training in New Zealand um yeah so um part of first year we have five um follow-through women that we follow right well not necessarily right through but we find them at the start of the year and we follow them through their antenatal care, their birth and their six weeks postnatal care. So we do an assignment on that. So we have to do five to six women a year in first year that we find ourselves. Um, yeah. And then second year, we um, are partnered up with a community midwife and that's where we get our follow through um, through that midwife. And I think we have about the same amount. I think it's about five or six women that we follow through as well and then i think third year it's fairly much the same but it's a it's a larger number of um, women that we follow through each year and that's in addition to all of our placements in the hospital gosh um, so you do well. five or yeah. six women each year yeah i think i think that's i think that's what it is i think we have to have a total of 40 it might even be more than that but it might be even a, a total of 40 um follow-throughs that we need to have by the time that we apply for registration at the um, end of third year and that's not just birth managing the birth that's actually providing the care no, from the start yeah it's actually um being part of that continuity of care and being from postnatal birth and um uh, sorry antenatal birth and um the postnatal period so gosh so in the uk we have to get 40 births to qualify but that is literally just attending the woman at the birth in the hospital or at home yeah i think I, I think yeah i know we have to have about 40 to qualify it might not be that many follow-throughs but we are encouraged throughout the entire degree to um there we go 25 oh, sorry, yeah. Births. yeah so we are encouraged for the whole whole degree to for um to do that continuity of care that's amazing 
So Linda, what happens if the birth occurs to be in uni for lectures? Uh, well, I study well, most um, courses here in New Zealand. We don't actually have to go and physically sit in lectures. We do, I live in Wellington and Otago is down on the South Island, which, um, so I do all of my study from home and I have weekly group sessions at the hospital. So all of our study is blended learning. We do it online, we do it face to face and we get together um, every few months um, to do intensive blocks. So um, births come priority. So if we do have a woman who's in a birth, um, it's top priority. Um, doesn't matter if you're gonna be on an online class or at an intensive, um, obviously, except for exams. Um, but birth, if you have a woman who's due to give birth and you're on call from 37 weeks and she goes into labor, off you go type thing, so. Only, um, maternal mortality. That's, um, that sounds so sensible. So we have to attend lectures. Um, I mean, actually, the, the course could be delivered online, thinking about it quite successfully. A lot of our studying is self-directed anyway. But um, we aren't allowed to miss lectures for the birth, which seems crazy with our... I mean, we only caseload two women. And wow. there are certain, we, we're only allowed to go to... The, we're not allowed to go on our annual leave. And we're only allowed to go attend the birth if it's within um, term time and we're on shift, which... Um, it's quite restrictive, especially as we only caseload two women. You'd think that you'd want to sort of prioritise that over everything else. Yeah, absolutely. I think they've done it really well here. So, And do you have a good um, retention? So once qualified, do midwives tend to stay in the job in New Zealand, do you know? Um, I'm not sure of the exact statistics. There's a lot of movement going on over here because um, even though we've got a great system, it's not funded properly by the government. So um, I know that there is a big amount, a lot of, of midwives leaving the profession at the moment just due to the stresses and obviously they're not getting paid what they what they should be being paid. But I think there's a lot of passion coming through the course and I think the course is structured in a way to keep that passion up while yeah. at the same time keeping us realistic about what we're getting ourselves into. But um i think yeah we're lucky in terms of the, the system we've got we just need it to be funded properly so that midwives aren't burning out and aren't being paid a pittance you know so i think that's the um concern in the uk from a lot of midwives is that we're not paid very much and the expectations of caseloading mean that you're doing a, a lot more work for not very much money so exactly. are your government listening to you we hope so. There's lots of marches going on at the moment, or well, there were last week leading up to today. Um, so all we can do is wait and hope. And I think we've got about two weeks before we hear about the budget. So we're all waiting with bated breath at the moment. <laughs> OK, yeah. And um, Zyra, is it Zyra or Zara? Can you use your microphone, Zyra? You're a third year student, I think. Is that what it said? Just wondered what your experience had been of your training and having access to so many caseloading women. Oh, you don't have a microphone. OK, um, that's no problem. You can type an answer if you don't mind. Um, I just wondered your opinion. So having gone through three years of caseloading, have you coped with that training? Have you got to a point where you felt you couldn't cope or was too much to do? the pressure to caseload so many women over the three years? I'm just interested to understand what pressures are on you as students having that kind of setup? Because from my point of view, it sounds perfect. But then I was thinking, well, there's quite a lot of women to actually caseload when you're still training. <clears throat> yeah the assignments are a pressure aren't they so looking after the women is great but there are lots of assignments because it's I assume it's a, on, an honours degree in New Zealand like it is in the UK since 2009 it's been an honours degree so there is a lot of expectation on academic ability as well as um the clinical aspect of the job but I have to say I feel as though everything I have learned has come from working on the job I mean obviously you have to do some academic 
aspects. It's not honours in Scotland. Oh, that's right. That's that's. So is it yes? Not honours here. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm going in. So, Linda, what's the difference between an honours and a not honours then? Is there less academic work to do? Well, it's just um, it's just a basic degree in Scotland. I wonder what the honours bit means, though. <laughs> oh, in, in well, it's taking it to the next level in the um, whatever you call it, SQA is the Scottish version, uh, the educational framework. Uh, honours is like a it's an extra year, isn't it? Taking it to dissertation level, we don't um, do that here in Scotland. Although we do do a direct masters. Right, so you can go on to a masters from that. Degree. Well, no, you, you can go straight into a master's without having done your midwifery first. But that's just a wee anomaly and it's nothing really anything to do with, with yeah. this. Um, yeah. as I say, we also don't have students having to get their uh, get money and all that. We still give them a bursary. I think the trouble is if we went to honours, it might become like you having to get your own money and not get a bursary. So I don't yeah. think want to go down that route. But anyway, that's like the side there. Yes. It's because you so said UK. <laughs> and it wasn't quite UK. Sorry, yeah, again. you're right. I think, well, Scotland leads the way in most of these things, doesn't it? We need to look more to how Scotland are running their degree. I think so. Um, definitely. So direct entry in New Zealand, Laura. Um, do you mean you do three years training and then you enter into midwifery practice? You, you're not a nurse first. Is that what you mean? Yeah, that's right. You're not, you don't have to do... Um, you don't have to do nursing before you go into it. So, I mean, you can, but you still have to go through the um, the three years. You can get um, recognition of prior learning for some aspects, but it's um, it's still a three-year degree that you need to do, yeah. And is there then much opportunity for going on and doing, I mean, do most midwives go straight into the job? Um, I don't know the stats on it, but I believe so. And then we do have... Um, I know a lot of my mentors and a lot of other people that have recently graduated, you know, they like to think about doing their master's. It's something that I'd love to do because I eventually yeah. want to educate as well. So, Yes. Australia is... Hi, Terry. Australia is direct entry. You don't need a degree in nursing. They offer double degrees. Oh, that's interesting. So so how does that work, Terry? You, you, is it longer to do a double degree? Hmm. So in Australia, are you a are you a student midwife, Terry, or are you a an educator? Can you turn your microphone on? Four years versus three years. It's interesting. Sorry, you are a, a. I don't know how to turn it on. So I think you can click on the phone at the top the icon and click on it and it should go red and that means that you can talk into the the uh, microphone on your laptop or computer uh is it working hello yes Hello. Hi. Oh, right. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, uh, Terry. Lovely to speak to you. Hello. Um, Me too. So, uh, so introduce yourself. So, are you a student or a? Yes, I am. A, I study part time midwifery. Yeah. In Australia. And um, in Australia, you can either do nursing, which is three year degree, and they also have. I think they have honours as well. Um, I'm sure they do. Um, and or you can do midwifery. Uh, yeah. and some. Some universities allow you to study nursing and midwifery part time, and some also offer double degrees. Um, my uni that I'm going to doesn't offer the double degree, so I would have to do two separate degrees um, if I wanted to do both. For instance, um, to be a maternal health nurse, you do you need a, a double degree and a masters. Um, oh, what's a maternal so, health nurse? What do they do? Uh, in New Zealand, the New Zealanders will be familiar with a Plunkett nurse. It's um, the nurse that you see after you have your baby. Um, it's like um, 
when you bring the baby for home from the hospital and the community nurse will come and check up on the baby and then you have like the couple of weeks check and then the six months check and then the one year check etc right so it's like a health visitor i guess in the uk yeah Maybe. yeah it must be like that yeah. um yeah so to be a paternal child house i think that's what it's called you do need a double and you before you're accepted into masters, if you wanted to go down that path, you have to serve a certain amount of hours within nursing and midwifery before you're eligible to do that masters. Okay, well, that um, makes sense, I think, doesn't it? To get some experience under your belt. Yeah, but otherwise you can just be a midwife or just be a nurse if you don't want to do the double degree. Okay, and what's your experience of continuity of care in Australia? Is that something that's on the agenda? They are, it's um because I'm from New Zealand, I'm used to the way um, the nursing, oh, sorry, the midwifery is there, whereas it's kind of like community nursing as in the midwives will deliver the babies within families and friends, etc. Or you've got the midwives at the hospital. In Australia, it's not like that. Um, you mainly use the midwives at the hospital. Um, and they've just, in Victoria where I am, they've got a clinic here that um, so one of the first to be approved for private midwifery where the midwives can um, see you before like while you're pregnant and then go with you to the hospital to have your baby and then afterwards they follow you up as well post birth. So, so that's, that's kind of like case loading. Must be, yeah, but that's um, relatively new in Australia, that type um, of setup because this is my first year here um, studying in. Uh, wow. In Australia here but um, yeah. I know that Australia as a whole that's something they're working towards so they have that constant care because otherwise it's um every time you do see a midwife it's a different midwife so it's not the same midwife whereas in New Zealand you'll have that one nurse uh, sorry one midwife the whole time so yeah. they know your case they know you but that's not how it works in Australia you get whoever is on when you go to your visit at the hospital so right and did you say that was a private, a privately run system did you say it's private? And in Australia, we have private and public. In New Zealand, okay. they don't have public. Oh, sorry, I don't have private, they only have uh, public. So you wouldn't need insurance to deliver your babies in a private hospital in New Zealand. But in Australia, yeah. you do you have do. Um, private hospitals um, and public hospitals. But what they've done is, um, I forgot what they're called, I think they're my midwives, I can't remember their name, they're a private clinic, but they have an arrangement with a public hospital so they can deliver your baby there, even though okay. you're going to them the whole time. Yeah. Okay, so Laura's commented that Australia has pockets of private midwives that do caseload, but as a whole, they don't. Yeah, um, that's right. So that sounds similar to the UK. So here we, you tend to have the same community, you tend to see the same community midwife. Um, so all the antenatal care is given by the same midwife, hopefully, usually. And also yeah. that same midwife can give you postnatal care after the birth. But it, the, the, the lack of continuity lies in the fact that when you actually are having the baby, you're going into hospital and it can be any one of whoever's on shift working on labour ward. You wouldn't have met them before. Yeah. And you know, the midwives are lovely and they're really good at building that bond and that rapport quickly with women. Yeah. To, to build up that relationship but how lovely to have to have the woman that's looked after you all through your antenatal to deliver your baby and I think that's what we're trying to work towards yeah but it's, it's going to take a humongous um effort and vision and change to alter how we work in the UK at the moment there's little pilots across the country which have worked but I'm just wondering how so if do you think Australia want to the driving force in the UK is that better, the better birthing said that it's safer care if we have better continuity. So yeah. it's coming from the government, there's a whole massive push on safety and um, reducing stillbirth rate and yeah. um, interpartum deaths and that sort of thing. So, And all of the evidence is showing that if you have continuity of carer, you improve outcomes for baby and mum. Yeah. That makes, makes sense because the midwife is familiar with everything, like your history and just... Um, it's just consistency they can notice stuff whereas if you're having to explain yourself every single time you might something may be missed you never know because you're just exactly. having to explain everything all the time and women get sick of repeating this story over and over and over again as well yes. um and yes you're obviously risking missing something so yes. do you think that's on the agenda in australia oh yeah definitely 
Yeah, it definitely is, because I think when the Epping branch, sorry, I can't remember the name, when they did it initially, it was like a bit of a trial and it worked out successfully. And I believe they began rolling it out a bit more. I don't know if it was their franchise or whatever it was, but I know it was extended a bit more. So I think that is something that they are working towards in Australia. Oh, so Laura said that it's called My Midwives. Yeah, My Midwives, that's the one. And I think Laura, if it's Laura from Epping, I think that's her name. I, I follow her on one of the pages that I'm on. If she's the Laura that works for that company, right? Does that okay. name sounds familiar. No, that's not me. I'm a student. That's Laura. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, Laura's the name of the lady there now. No, but I am Australian. I moved from Australia a year and a bit ago to do my training here. So. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so Laura, you so Laura, you're Australian and you're training in New Zealand, and um, yes, yes. Perry, you're. And I'm a, I'm a dual citizen, so you're... I can do my training in Australia. Okay, so with what what were the drivers? Was it to do with how the New Zealand midwives work, Laura, that made you want to train in New Zealand? Um, well, my husband got an amazing job here, so that was a big driving force. And I okay. was due to start my training in Australia the year before last, but um, as it turned out, you know, the world works in weird ways, and it you know this is one of the best countries in the world to train as a midwife. So yeah. I just I'm very lucky to be training here. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you made a good point about the fact that Australia doesn't support midwives as an autonomous profession. Yeah. Whereas in New Zealand they are. So yeah. In New Zealand, are they self are, are midwives self employed? Yes. Yes, yes uh, they are. Yeah. Right. Whereas in Australia they're employed by a trust, uh, by a hospital. A hospital. Yeah. And there are midwives here that work at the hospital as well. So. Yeah. That's right. When you can't, like in New Zealand at the moment, there's a massive shortage. So a lot of people have to rely on the hospital staff, but it's, it's a really bad shortage in New Zealand and people are struggling to find midwives. So okay. pretty full on. So there are some staff that work only in the hospital in yes. New Zealand and they are employed yes, by the hospital and they're not, they don't have the autonomy. autonomy. Okay, that's really interesting. They still are autonomous. They they can still um, prescribe and um, within yeah. their scope and and that sort of thing. But the the government, yeah, they're known as as an autonomous profession rather than having to work non autonomous autonomously. Okay, and so in New Zealand, if a woman wants a home birth but she's high risk, how do you manage that? Is I think it might vary on. I think it varies. I'm not familiar myself. I know they have done it, um, but maybe Laura might know a bit more since she's in New Zealand. I think yeah. Vicky might know a bit more. She's the qualified midwife <laughs> in an awesome <laughs> part of New Zealand that I know does home birth. So. <laughs> yeah, so Vicky, have you got any comments on high-risk women? Are they allowed to make, because choice is a big thing in the UK at the moment as well, giving women choice of where they want to birth and following that up. Um, is that the case in... New Zealand? Um, I would definitely send her maybe for a obstetric consult and um, some midwives, it depends on your experience and it depends on um, whether you live in the back of the <laughs> If you lived in Broken Hill or something like that, I'd probably not do twins at home, maybe yeah. not do breeches at home, but, but some midwives have that confidence and I mean I've delivered um, like quite big BMI people down in um, a primary unit um, and was very successful but there's certain other big BMIs that I certainly wouldn't do at home or in the hospital so I think in New Zealand there's a partnership model where the woman wants a certain thing and then the midwife um, can actually work out whether they're actually confident enough to do that um, and obviously I have good support in this area so, um, you know, you can, it, it's not, you're not a failure when you come in from a home birth to a hospital. Um, I mean, I have them all booked in at the hospital anyway. Um, and I would do certain ones that I'd really encourage um, women to be at home. And that's where you empower women to really enjoy their birth um, process for the, for the, um, their journey for that for that nine months that you're working with them. So you can do high risks at home, but um, like, you know, previous Caesars at home, if you've only had one Caesar, then that's a little bit more dodgy where I'd probably do maybe a second 
after a second vaginal birth, maybe I would do that. Depends on how far from my base hospital I would be as well. That's really interesting. And do you think, um, how happy, I mean, I know it's difficult to gauge, but are, are midwives in New Zealand happy with the way they work? So it sounds like it provides an amazing service for women, and I'm sure the women love how you provide caseloading. But are the staff car coping? Um, the midwifery population is divided like the Australian midwives were just talking between the hospital midwives and your independent midwives and of course there's a bit of competition between the two but then there's also um, great collegial support where when I come into the hospital they know exactly how I work, I know how they work, um, you know like to me actually just being with the woman and whether I deliver that baby or not so the hospital midwife might do that if they end up with epidurals then I will stay with my women all the way through and um, yeah but I think the increased acuity with the increase in gestational diabetes the hypertension the obesity uh, increasing diabetes insulin and all that type of thing it's really putting a strain on the hospital midwives because there's they're delivering more in the secondary services whereas the primary units and the home births are getting less in number and you're getting it to have to be a bit more game but you also work in partnership with women and if they really really are determined then sometimes that's part of it that they can um, be determined uh, to to birth wherever they want to really um, as long as it's safe mm. interesting and how do students work with you so they caseload their own women do they also have you as a mentor so I think the students um, like in first year they might do five weeks with a hospital and five weeks with an LMC uh, the LMC being the community midwives and then the second year they would do um, again their practical stuff would be all the way so there's like you do a birth but then there's another continuity paper where they have to do an antenatal visit a delivery or birth or whatever you want to call it and then um, your postnatal visit so they're the continuity so teaching them that um, if you meet the meet the woman when they're antenatal then they obviously birth better I mean a lot of the girls that I have don't want epidurals and they don't want to go to the bigger centers and all that type of thing so it's just fantastic that um, and if I work with a student like their third year placement I think is about um, 17 weeks is one of their continuity papers so then they have to do all my clinics, all my postnatals and the whole lot. So they actually get a really good opportunity to meet the women all the way through. And so they will know them. So that's actually really, really good that those students will know them. It's pretty rough on a student to not get paid and to have to be working with me for 17 weeks because I'm pretty busy. <laughs> yeah but what an amazing experience and I mean although when I, I only caseloaded two women and I managed to be I, I did the whole thing for both of them I was at the birth of both and it was a really incredible experience wow. um and it meant a Come lot out of and visit me in New Zealand for six months I'll, I'll oh. help you I'll learn a little bit gosh I would absolutely love to I have three boys and a husband and a dog um so I'd have to <laughs> I'd have to try and convince them. I don't think I could leave them. Uh, five minute warning. Sorry, I've been given a five minute warning. Okay, thanks, Linda. Um, I think my point is coming from a student perspective in the UK, um, case loading for all of us. You talk to any students that have, or sorry, not the UK, England, because I'm from England. Um, speak to any students coming from England that have case loaded. It's been the best part of their degree. They've loved it. And then we get into our jobs and we don't work in that way anymore. And it's so frustrating. So there is a big push with Better Births to try and implement um, a system that works and that doesn't burn midwives out. And I just, are there any tips, anything? I guess um, you're really experienced. Um, sorry, was it Terry? Who was I talking to? Or Vicky? Is it Vicky? Um, you're really experienced in it. Is there anything that you would change about the system, the way it works in New Zealand to make it better for midwives? Um, obviously, 
to work with partners that are similar minded and similar that's where you know if you're working together i mean you know you always go somewhere with with your friend and um the midwives i work with um become good friends and i think that's the main thing is to support each other and all the way through so that's from a positive point of view and and also um, working with the women um, empowering them knowing that you're making a difference with everything in the whole um, yeah and just look after yourself as women I mean yeah. midwives are women we don't look after ourselves we've got three kids a cat and a dog and and we do everything but you know we really got to look after ourselves and that's what midwives day is about I think yeah, and have that support from each other and um, build relationships with each other. Yeah, mm. so funding is a real issue, isn't it? It's a shame. So do students feel overworked in New Zealand or do you think it's your, you cope? Any students out there? What was that? Can you repeat student, that question? I was just asking the students whether they feel as though they are treated fairly as students and that they cope with their workload with the way it runs with lots of case loading. Um, I would say that we've been tremendously supported um, by the midwives. I mean, granted, I've only been in it for five months, but um, I, I feel tremendously supported by the midwives that I've come across um, because they know that there's problems facing the profession and they just, you know, they want to see it fixed as much as, as they want it fixed. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a, I mean, New Zealand's a very small country, so I think, I think there's a really good camaraderie here and I think students as a, on a whole generally speaking are very supported by the midwives out there. That makes all the difference doesn't it so you have good mentorship from do you have the same mentor all the way through? No we change mentors but we do have um, weekly sessions with a midwife a registered midwife um, who is our main mentor for for the first and second year and, she, and they're just incredible they're a huge support but um, yeah like I said it's a small country so we are supported by the profession, definitely. That's great to hear. And is that the same in Australia, would you say, Terry? Uh, yes, we are. Um, the way the university, all of our lecturers and tutors, and uh, they're all either uh, qualified midwives or nursing, because um, we a lot of our classes are sh shared with other um, disciplines within the health science um, area. Um, but yeah, very, very supportive, even for placements and just everything I feel so far um, that they do go out of their way to really help you learn and make it a really good experience. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the mentorship over here. Do you have the same mentor for, do you have continuity of mentor? Because that's another issue in the UK. Oh, yeah. in well, we, have, um, we have a set person that, for instance, we have like the course coordinator, like she's a midwife. Um, and then we will have a separate person for placement and it's the same person. Um, and then like the lecturer, usually there's a main lecturer um, and they'll have casual lecturers, but overall you'll have the same uh, lecturers or tutors throughout the whole course for the oh, okay. semester. I mean. That helps. Yeah, exactly. And they become familiar with you as well. So that also makes it easier. Great. Well, I think we're almost done. It's been, I'm so thrilled that we've had um, students and uh, midwives from right across the other side of the world it's just technology is amazing isn't it um, and this is the lovely thing about the um, International Day of the Midwife that we can all share our experiences and we can learn from each other we've just had a new um, person join us Lynn hi Lynn. I think we're just finishing up but you could probably hear this on hear it can you can you listen in again Linda Yeah, in about an hour's time, it will be um, the recording will be on the website in the event, oh, great. the student cafe event. But we, you've got a couple of minutes if if Lynn has any burning questions. Yeah. So, said. where are you from, Lynn? You can activate your mic by clicking on the red button. No questions. You're just listening. <laughs> are you from the UK? So if anyone would like to share their Twitter, Twitter handle or username, I'd love to follow you. I'm a big fan of um, 
social media. So um, if you're writing your Twitter username in the chat box, that'd be great if you are on Twitter. What's your um what's your campaign called? Get your get tweet out. Or something. Get your tweet on. <laughs> oh, there you go. I was almost right. I mentioned you yesterday at the thing I was doing down in England. <laughs> oh, did you? Thank you. So yeah, you I get you... 110 more students following you, which you would love, wouldn't you? That'd be amazing. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, I'm passionate about using social media to bring um, everyone together, collaborate. Oh, my. Totally. That's what my comp my presentation was about yesterday. Really? Yep, and it was to a multi-professional team as well. So, uh, And Brilliant. it was all about how we should be using social media more to, to record things like this um, so that people, not only those people who go to conferences who have to pay for them, obviously, um, hear a presentation, but you actually, everybody has a chance to listen to the presentation. So anyway, sorry, on you go. Yeah, Get your tweet on. that's great. Well, I think I'm done. If um... Lynn, Is there any, I... any last minute um, questions or anything before I kind of finish off this session with a couple of slides? No? I want to thank everybody for coming as well, because actually this has been a really good discussion and it makes me think that next year we maybe should have more of these instead of presentations, you know, like a, a conversation between two people. You know, it's much more interesting than listening to sometimes than listening to one person giving a presentation. You get a set of questions and then you can ask them and they give the same information, but in a far more interactive, interesting way, I think. So we should try that. Anybody fancies having a go next year? Just tell us. Yeah, there you go. So make sure you've got this in your diary for next year now. <laughs> and make sure you follow the blog or are on our mailing list or whatever so that you hear about us call, putting out call for abstracts and we can do something like that. I think that would be grab, uh, fabulous as well as cafes. But you won't be a student next year though, will you, Charlene? Nope, I'll be a fully fledged midwife. You're on mute. I had to unmute you. That's grand. And did I hear that you've got a job already? Yes, I've got a job where I wanted to work. So I'm really, really thrilled. Oh, fabulous. And That's I'm going to be on their case well, about case loading. <laughs> quite right. Well, it's a big debate, actually. It's, um, it's a big discussion up here in Scotland as well, where people don't really fancy being on call all the time, but they're not being very realistic about it all. Yes, she can. So uh, I want to thank Charlene anyway for being a fabulous um, facilitator in this student cafe and to all of you for coming and sharing in with this. And I'll just move 